So I finally hit double digits in terms of hours in Project Zomboid, and I've decided that it's time we get ourselves a vehicle, try get out of the main town that we spawn in, and try and find a nice country house that we can settle down at and live out the rest of our days. Now in my last video I stated that it was my first day, day one in Project Zomboid, and I just wanted to say thank you to Randolph for really recognizing that I am an experienced player, and the way I navigate is second to none. Don't listen to anyone else in those comments, they have no idea what they're talking about, they're all insane. Just trust him. I'm just going to quickly shamelessly mention that all of these clips were captured over at Twitch and Kick over at Mr. Dodge X's channels, so feel free to go check those out, I've been playing Project Zomboid quite a bit lately. And I just really want to quickly talk about something that has greatly helped me play the game since just starting out. And the thing that helped me out most is going into the builder playstyle mode. I didn't have any idea which game mode I was supposed to be playing on, and a lot of people on different forums just mentioned that you should be playing on Survivor, and I found it really overwhelming. So if you're brand new to the game, jump into Builder, there are still zombies, so you can practice all the different usual things, but you'll have a much better time doing it and you'll actually enjoy the game starting out. Now this gameplay you're seeing here is still Survivor, it's not Builder, so just clarifying that. We've dropped into the town of Muldro, I think. That's how you pronounce it, Kentucky. And the reason I've chosen this particular spot is because I've had the most luck in it. So that's that's my logic and reasoning. So get lost. And after doing some thrusting exercises and airing out a few bathrooms, I thought I was on my way. But more importantly, I had to get myself some food and supplies to keep me going after I got my vehicle to ensure my survival. After collecting a, another conga line of the undead, I found myself in the back of a candy store, which was actually quite stocked with a lot of items that I could use to eat. Unfortunately, I think the store owner heard me rustling around in the back and started banging on the door. Unfortunately, half the town also wanted to come in and check out the latest candy, so I couldn't spend too much time there, but I got what I needed to get, just a few snacks for the road, and we were off. Don't ask me how I managed to pull off this maneuver, I did parkour in your 8, so I'm putting it up to that. And can I just say... Mwah. Chef's kiss. These super high fences are an absolute godsend. Zombies see them and they just think, Yeah, nah, man, can't make it. Sorry, I've got other plans. On my search for a car, I was looting house after house, going street by street. I eventually stumbled upon a neat little shed, which happened to contain a gas can. This is going to be integral to getting a car running when we eventually find one. Also played around with a generator, I didn't actually realise these were in the game, so I had a little muck around with that, realised I wouldn't be able to carry it, it was going to be impossible, and I had no use for it. So this will be really cool if we want to get like irrigation or lights or whatever in the future, I'm not sure what can be done, I'll have to research that, but I just found that really cool. One thing I'm still not exactly understanding is the whole crouch sneaking system. I thought it was supposed to mask you from zombies seeing inside houses, you would sort of duck under windows, but it seems to not actually do anything. I guess it reduces the amount of noise you're making when walking, but I'm just not seeing any benefits with it. Yeah, no, I love some beans. Good news is I've learned how to finally use the backpack system, so that's a plus. It was at this point I decided to leave the comfort of the home I was staying in and start heading out and trying out different vehicles to see if they worked. Completely forgot that Americans are backwards and do everything on the opposite side. Now I'm sure there's a button to swap seats while you're already sitting in the car, but I decided to run around the front of the car like an absolute maniac and hop in the driver's seat, and it was at this point I realised I don't actually know what I'm doing when it comes to driving the car or getting it started. So I was back to using my own two legs for transportation, so I decided to just walk. And walk. And walk. Until I finally reached a new looking suburb with lots of shiny cars and lots of new friends. Unfortunately for me, even though the entire neighborhood was covered in zombies, everyone here still had a brain, so they've locked all their cars, so it wasn't much use looking around here. Also managed to get ambushed by a lone zombie hiding in one of the rooms. I don't know if I got bitten or scratched or if they're the same thing, I can't really tell the difference just yet, but uh, my character wasn't feeling too great afterwards. But still I pressed on, checking every car along the way, still feeling the effects of the bite with a lot of pain and still feeling a lot of dehydration and anxiety. We continue on looking for the perfect vehicle to get out of this town. After a ton of walking and a ton of stressing I finally found some storage buildings. 
The main issue for me at this point, however, was the large group of zombies that had followed me to this area. I made the unfortunate mistake of opening a window and climbing in, not realizing that I wouldn't be able to close the window behind me, which let a few zombies start diving through the window like a bunch of maniacs. I got incredibly lucky and found a shovel in one of the storage boxes here, which was absolutely perfect timing as zombies started to smash through all the different entrances in the building due to the amount of noise I was making. I only had a few seconds to think while all the zombies were smashing through the different windows and doors, so I took a moment, had a think, and thought about how I was going to approach this. A simple strategy, I decided to try and let a few in at a time, take care of those groups, and then let the next group in so I could take care of them like clockwork. Luckily enough for me, I don't think all the zombies that were originally following me made it to the storage shed, so I only got a fraction of the amount, which ended up probably saving my life. I had since remembered all the comments in my last video talking about me having too many negative moodles. Moodles? Moodles. Moodles. Such a weird word. Anyways, so I took care of those before taking on the next batch of zombies. I definitely think the shovel is my favorite early game item. It takes care of zombies so quickly and does so much damage, at least compared to other things I've found. Once all the zombies were dispatched, I managed to leave and hop over a few backyard fences, went around the side of a house and found the greatest sight I think I've ever seen. A pristine, glorious, wonderful colored 1989 Toyota Corolla. And guess what? After hopping in the driver's side and having a bit of a panic attack, this thing started driving and the feeling was incredible. I could feel the adrenaline pumping through my veins as I made a quick getaway from the zombie in the driveway. Reminiscent of the house escape in Dawn of the Dead, it was just us, our amazing car, and the open road. To say I took things cautiously was an understatement. I wasn't about to let the greatest thing happen to me in this game get taken away. So I just went at a nice slow steady pace, kept away from the zombies, didn't want them damaging the car, and just made sure to go slow on those long stretches of roads. Now there was only one problem. The car didn't have a ton of fuel and it wasn't going to get us too far if we were to leave a city. So the first thing I had to do which was critical was to fill up that gas container we found earlier and fuel up the car. Wait! One more thing. I had to fix all these issues with my character. I was hungry, thirsty, anxious, in pain, holding too much and overheating and I really needed to stop somewhere and get a lot of these fixed up. So I found a nice little pub. It looked pretty quiet, so I decided to hop in there and get these issues fixed. After greeting the owner and actually managing to solve all of my character's issues, it was time to leave and head out for some petrol and some much needed rest. Now I'd be lying if I said I knew where any petrol stations were in this game or anything in general, but my plan was just to look at the area I was in and sort of narrow down where a petrol station might be. And I ended up getting really lucky and finding one, but unfortunately there were a few zombies around which I had to clear. There was a video I was watching on YouTube about the most pathetic ways to kill zombies in this game. This was the second worst method behind setting them all on fire, so I thought it would be a good substitute, considering there was too many for me to kill by myself. Out of the world. Now the sun had set, I was very, very tired extremely tired and I still had to get out of this town and find somewhere safe to sleep so that was the next mission in itself have you ever been so tired that you decided to sleep on the floor in the back rooms of a gas station if you answered yes to this question you'd probably relate really well to my character after a pretty lousy sleep I woke up feeling very very unwell but it was time to hit the town we headed over to our vehicle half fueled and set off on the next part of our adventure I did keep noticing that the heart icon on the left was constantly poking out saying that something was wrong. I failed to notice that this was due to my illness I woke up with due to my bad sleep. This is important as it will have some effects down the track. After driving what felt like an absolute eternity, I eventually came across this roadside fruit stall. Unfortunately, it looked like a lot of other survivors must have done this on their trips as they started to pour out of the small fruit store and come and say hello. Using my weapon of choice, the old Corolla, I decided to get out and loot these zombies as it looks like they were survivors who eventually became infected and they had a lot of great gear. Oh, it looks like fucking Ned Kelly in this thing. It's fucking sick, man. This was another learning moment for me where I got a bigger backpack and realized that the different capacities allowed me to store more items without becoming over encumbered and realizing that police 
vests and other items that were thicker helped you from getting scratched and bitten, which is great. Now I have no idea what happened inside this fruit stall. I certainly wasn't the one that dispatched these zombies, but there was quite a few bodies. But luckily enough for me, there was a ton of fresh food in a lot of these crates. So I grabbed as much as I could, chucked it in my car and continued on. Down the road, I found two huge barns full of boxes, which had heaps of farming supplies. I didn't really have a plan of what to do with this information at this point, but I made a mental note of where this place was in case I needed to come back and gather supplies for farming. After driving around for much of the evening, I finally managed to find a quiet house out in the middle of nowhere. And there it was. I parked up, climbed in through one of the front windows, closed the curtains behind me and all the ones in the house, made sure it was secure so no zombies could see in. TV was already going. It just felt cozy. It felt perfect. And the first item on the menu for me was to get a nice sleep in a good, good bed. The next day I woke up and decided to sit in front of the TV, which actually turns out cured a lot of my boredom and depression issues. I didn't really think that was going to be a thing. I was struggling to understand why my character wasn't happy and wasn't having a good time. Turns out TV fixes all. The other issue I had to fix was constantly losing health. I lost a ton overnight during my sleep and I couldn't figure out why. It took a while for me to realize that it was due to me being unwell and sick that I was losing health. This became confusing because I thought health and blood were sort of separate, as the game doesn't really specify this too much, especially to new players. But as soon as I realized this, I realized I had to pack up all my stuff and leave straight away. This is when Murphy's Law decided to go full effect. I was driving down the road, not paying attention to anything because I was so sick I just wanted to get better. And I was driving along, decided I had to swerve out of the way of this crashed vehicle and suddenly my car wouldn't turn on. And I didn't realize that it was because I had no fuel left. Uh, stupidly, I jumped back in the car and this zombie managed to get a good bite on me and made me fall over. And this was sort of the start of the complete downfall. I mean, there was already a downfall happening, especially this sickness. I quickly bandaged myself up, but uh, it was not looking good. I had lost my main source of transportation and actually my main zombie killing machine and uh, it was raining, it was miserable, I had so many issues wrong with me, and I'm running into giant groups of zombies now. It was not looking good. After coming to a fork in the road, I decided to turn left and hope that there was some sort of building or anything I could find with some sort of medical supplies. And to my surprise, I managed to find something I really wouldn't think I would find out here. It was a small military installation, a small barracks or something similar where soldiers would sleep and gear up. So I quickly started breaking into every room where soldiers were housed, looking in all the lockers that I could find to see if any of them had some sort of painkillers or medical supplies that I could use. There was plenty of items, weapons, gear, their clothing, I just couldn't find medical supplies until I walked into this one room and found a zombie. I quickly shoveled him over the head, checked his locker and found nothing. Yes, unfortunately, this looked like it was the end. I scrambled around looking in the crafting menu to see if I could craft some sort of pain relief or something that could cure me, but I could not find anything. My health was low. It was dark. It was raining. The time had struck. I was now one of the undead. But looking back, I'm actually very happy. I managed to get my first car up and running. I learned how the vehicles worked. I learned so many new mechanics. This is my first proper long gameplay, even though it's only like two or three days in game, but it was very fun. I think every time I play through now, I'm getting far better than the last playthrough and I'm learning more and more things. I do eventually want to try some of the challenges that are in the main menu, but until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this playthrough. Hope it wasn't too boring. And if you could like the video, it'd be awesome if you want to subscribe to see more. And you can check out my streams, that's where I recorded this gameplay. And I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching, see you later.